Deserts are famously inhospitable places, usually only inhabited by the odd camel and a few extremely hardy individuals with a whole lot of skills. But these days, it seems that the lack of water or plant life or, well, anything at all, even snow, is not stopping people from creating huge cities and massive mega projects smack bang in the middle of some of the most forbidding terrain on Earth. They are either bold or mad, or perhaps their motivation is something a little more green. Let's investigate this phenomenon as we look at 20 crazy mega projects that are transforming deserts. Number 20. The Line Saudi Arabia Back in 2021, the Saudi government unveiled some pretty outlandish looking plans for a self-sufficient city called The Line. It doesn't sound all that crazy, until you see that the city is actually built of two parallel skyscrapers and they reach 160 miles long. This banana-sounding scheme is part of the city of Neom. The line is supposed to incorporate a whole cityscape within the two massively long structures. They're designed to be 656 feet wide, 1,640 feet high, and stretch for a crazy 106 miles across the desert. This measurement would not only make them the longest by a huge margin of any skyscraper in the world, it would also make them amongst the tallest. The line would be set to reach all the way across the northwest of the country of Saudi Arabia, up near the Red Sea. That's all pretty far out there, but the aesthetics of this proposed design are also so futuristic that it really kinda hurts. The structure is set to be covered in mirrors so that it reflects all the desert landscape around it and presumably fries every ant that walks within a 50-mile radius. It's also supposed to be capable of housing 9 million people and has everything that a city of that size would need, but future style. I mean, the place looks like the Jetsons live there. They're flying taxis and robot maids, as well as a whole bunch of unnatural nature features like parks and waterfalls. I mean, this is the desert after all. Oh, and just in case this wasn't already completely insane, they also plan to add an artificial moon. What the heck? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. New Administrative Capital, Egypt Cairo is just getting too old and busy and loud and full of all those people. So in their infinite wisdom, the powers that be in Egypt have decided that they don't want all the hassle of that crowded commute anymore. They're moving the administrative center from the grime of the city. But instead of picking another place with infrastructure and, I don't know, houses for the people that work there, they've decided that the best option is to build an entirely brand new smart administrative city in the desert. That seems like the best use for tax dollars that I can think of. But anyways, this is the new capital, and it's proposed to accommodate between 18 million and 40 million people by the year of 2050. They say that they're proposing to create many new employment opportunities and new housing, which Egypt definitely needs. It's an ever-increasing and overpopulated place. Cairo has been massively under pressure from all the population that it has experienced in recent decades, and this plan looks to improve the quality of life for all of the people that live in the new capital. It still doesn't have a name, but stuff has been happening here at the site, which is 28 miles to the east of Cairo. The plans include a large park, some lakes, about 2,000 schools, colleges, and all the technology and innovation centers, along with a diplomatic quarter, business district, cultural district, administrative district, 18 hospitals, over 1,000 mosques, and other places of worship. It will also have a massive stadium, a theme park, a 40,000 hotel room, solar farm, and an electric railway. Woo! It's nothing if not ambitious. Number 18. Trojina As if the indoor ski resort in the middle of Dubai was not bananas enough, it seems that Saudi Arabia has decided to take the concept of skiing in the desert to an entirely new and bonkers level. This is Trojina, part of the Neom stuff that includes the line, except that this is a ski resort, outside, in a place that doesn't have any natural snow to speak of. Oh, and they've also won the bid for the 2029 Asian Winter Games to be held there, uh, despite the fact that 
This place is not one that actually experiences any kind of winter in the classic sense of the word. So, what do you do if you have more money than God, and you have no real commitment to the lasting ability for life to exist on the planet? Well, apparently you just build a ski resort with real snow and say that you'll operate it on so-called sustainable infrastructure and renewable energy. But if your sole aim is to put snow where snow patently does not belong, and you insist on building a whole new infrastructure to support rich people dicking about up a mountain, well, then I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it's neither sustainable nor really a renewable thing, given that this same energy could go into stuff that, you know, is actually needed to support life on Earth and not simply add more waste and nonsense to the equation? I mean, that doesn't even include the very real problem that if you literally change the ecosystem of one place and make it suddenly freezing and necessitate all the technology and energy that it requires to keep a temperate place in freezing conditions, well, you'll affect the surrounding areas for sure. You can't simply alter and control a whole natural environment and not anticipate a change in another space as a result. This can go on and on and on from place to place, as each environmental change will alter the next. This is a very stupid and irresponsible idea, and it just goes to show you that there is indeed such a thing as too much money. Number 17. The World Islands Dubai if you're trying to convince world travelers to come visit your luxury tourist destination, you really have to offer them a selection of beaches. Unfortunately for Dubai, this country is lacking in the natural beach department, but what they lack in sandy seafronts, they make up for with, well, money. Lots and lots of money. And if there is one thing that we all know about money, it's that people with a lot of it can basically do whatever the heck they like. So with that in mind, it's probably no surprise that Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the dude behind most of Dubai's transformations, put in motion the plans for a massive man-made island. This would not only be the biggest on the planet, always a goal in the UAE it would seem, but also solve the lack of beaches issue in the process. The result of this harebrained scheme is the Palm Trilogy. This is a group of three especially twirly palm-shaped islands, which has a mind-boggling surface area of 46.35 million square meters, making it bigger than Paris. It will be able to house over a million people, and not just in regular accommodations. This is Dubai, after all. The spaces will be the most fancy and luxurious, with multiple beachfronts and endless ways to spend more and more money, just the way it's all designed to be in the UAE. Number 16. New Maraba Back in February of 2023, the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia announced the plans to develop downtown Riyadh into a new Maraba development company. They've proposed that this is the total transformation process in which Riyadh will get the fanciest of makeovers, you know, like the gentrification procedure with which many of us are familiar, except on a more massive scale and under the Saudi prince's instruction. They say that the process will completely transform the existing downtown area and create what they claim will be a unique living, working, and entertainment space. Now, I'm going to hazard a guess and just suffice that the uniqueness of such a project is at least questionable, if not downright fabricated. I mean, how many times do developers make such promises, and then they produce yet more identical condos and office blocks with the bog-standard hotel complexes? Anyways, here we are, and this project proposes a selection of wonders, which includes green spaces with facilities to promote a healthy lifestyle, as well as a museum, a tech university, and a whole boatload of entertainment facilities from theater to cultural venues. The whole plan is anticipated to add a mere $50 billion to the non-oil economy of the country. So, the motivation may not simply be regeneration purposes, but who could possibly say? Number 15. Jubail Industrial City, Saudi Arabia Jubail in the eastern part of Saudi Arabia is the location of Jubail Industrial City, and it is the largest industrial city in the world. It is absolutely thrilling stuff now, isn't it? This place began to be constructed back in 1975 and has been expanding and developing ever since. 
Now naturally, the industrial stuff that I'm talking about here is oil, and more specifically, the petrochemical companies that are required to turn that oil into all of that filthy lucre. Back in 1975, the Saudi government decided that they needed to develop a brand new industrial city to capitalize on all of that lovely oil that they had, and so Jubail Industrial City covers an area of over a thousand square kilometers and has multiple industrial complexes as well as a big harbor and port facilities. Because all of that oil and junk needs to be shipped around the globe now, doesn't it? Interestingly, the American engineering procurement and management company Bechtel has been managing the project since its inception in the 1970s. Some of that foreign policy with Saudi Arabia seems a little clearer when you realize these sorts of long-term deals are what really make the world go round. Shall we just move swiftly on then? Number 14. Oxagon Next up, we have another one of those bat shiz places in Saudi Arabia's Neom project. This is Oxagon, and it's allegedly going to be the world's largest floating structure. Great, because that's what we all need, I'm sure. This is definitely useful, and will benefit the entire planet for generations to come. So they reckon that Oxagon is going to be a colossal futuristic megacity that will be no less than 33 times the size of New York City. The general idea is that half of this monster island will float on the Red Sea. I mean, can you just build whole massive new cities and bung them up on the water like that? Are we even allowed to do that? I'll go and get the blueprints drawn up. And so they reckon, because of course they do, PR and all of that is very important, you know, that this city will be powered entirely by renewable energy. Yes, that makes sense in the country that's pulling more oil out of the earth and making the most obscene wads of cash from selling fossil fuels to the rest of the world. They will be entirely environmentally friendly, of course. And they also bang on relentlessly about how seamlessly smooth the operation of such a place will be and how integrated the useful technology and intelligent systems and blah 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 blah. Read between the lines. It is making someone pots and pots of money, and here are all the latest buzzwords. Number 13. Kidia, Saudi Arabia as part of the diversification of the Saudi economy, making it less reliant on exporting bazillions of barrels of oil and still being extremely wealthy into the future, there's a program called Saudi Vision 2030. And this particular project, an entertainment city, is one of its shiny brand new features. Although it's not yet quite materialized, the city of Kidya is planned to be a massive center for entertainment and tourism. The plans began to be made real when construction started in 2019. Its main goal is to attract local spending and do all the diversifying that the Saudi Vision program requires. They aim to have annual visitor numbers of 17 million by the year 2030, and in typical Saudi style, they're planning to become the biggest tourism destination in the world. Well, who wants to go to Disney World when you can go to the middle of the Saudi desert instead? There are no issues with human rights if you build a big enough stadium, and enough theme parks now are there. Nothing to see here. Number 12. Abu Dhabi International Airport Next up, we have an airport. The fun just never ends. The Abu Dhabi airport has actually been in its current position ever since 1982, so it's not quite all that modern and shiny as some of the other places, but it is definitely expanding, so it is transforming the desert. Whether that's a good thing or not, well, that's subjective and I'll leave it up to you. The airport is one of the fastest growing in the whole entire world, and it currently serves as a major entry point to the United Arab Emirates. And as we know, that's a very wealthy place indeed, and where the money is, there is business, and where there's business, there is travel. So that all makes sense. As well as being a big airport in its own right, it's connected to Dubai by a highway that can deposit travelers in either emirate within an hour. Now, this place is rapidly expanding and has been the subject of huge amounts of investment in recent years. There have been several additions to the terminal buildings, and a second runway was built in 2002. This allowed for a massive increase in the air traffic that could come in and out of Abu Dhabi, all resulting in a lot more lovely cash. Number 11. The Yas Bay Waterfront Located in Abu Dhabi, the Yas Bay Waterfront area is a purpose-built destination for all your leisure and dining requirements. The three-kilometer boardwalk is positioned along a stretch of waterfront that is positively dripping with shiny modern eateries, offering all manner of globally-inspired dinners 
as well as a whole heap of luxury hotels and as much skyline viewing as you can handle. This is the true marker of any modern city after all. The skyline is the thing. This area looks out across the Arabian Gulf in one direction and to a beach skyline in the other, so you're never going to spend even a brief moment without the opportunity at some sort of view or to take a selfie for the social media boastings. Anyways, if you're full of dinner and have gotten sick of the scenery, well, you can also find yourself thoroughly and modernly entertained here as well. There is the arena, which hosts all kinds of events like music and comedy and even UFC. So there's something there for everyone, I suppose. Number 10. King Abdullah Economic City, Saudi Arabia this is another one of those planned cities in Saudi Arabia. Most of them in the desert do tend to be, unless they're super old and developed organically. That's the thing with building stuff where there's no obvious place for it to be. Many areas of the desert do not have any naturally occurring water sources, and the infrastructure required to support a city has to be entirely planned and built. This city was announced back in 2005 by King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz as one of the mega projects that Saudi Arabia is so fond of creating. In fact, there were six of these mega projects announced during that same year, but only this one actually took off. It was proposed as an enormous and world-changing place, like all of these things that we've been looking at tend to be, but in the end, it did not become quite the grand scheme as was originally planned. The city had failed to attract the sort of investments that they had anticipated, and it did not become a major manufacturing and logistics center. By 2018, the population was a fairly feeble 7,000, so much for all that bluster. Number 9. The Red Sea Project Saudi Arabia is on a massive diversification kick. It spent the last few years desperately trying to prove how modern it is, and despite still having some extremely dubious stances on human rights, it's been very busy with these massive projects to prove its credentials. Overall, the general idea behind all of these new big schemes is to move the Saudi economy away from such a reliance on oil and into more fashionable and sustainable areas like so-called ecotourism and massive hotel resorts. It all seems legit, right? This one is the flagship of diversification schemes, the Red Sea Project. It was announced back in 2017 by the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and is essentially a massive land and property mega project that is part of the Saudi Vision 2030 development program that we've seen so much propaganda about. The general idea here is to create a luxury destination for hotels and ecotourism opportunities. But you also have to question what sort of ecology is about huge developments in otherwise natural places? What are the tangible benefits to anything other than the Saudi bank balance? I don't think the desert is crying out for any more huge hotels and stadiums and shopping malls, but what do I know? I never even leave the basement. So surprise, surprise, the goal with this area is to increase GDP in Saudi Arabia by a mere $6.86 billion a year. It aims to have no less than 50 hotels and more than 1,000 residential properties. And all the top end of luxury, of course. Essential and valuable work. Number 8. King Salman Park in Saudi Arabia, there are always loads of redevelopment things taking place all over the show, and this is one of the vast scale that's currently in construction. The King Salman Park is a 4,102-acre public park and urban district within the city, and it is one of the public initiatives that proposes to increase the green spaces, which is no mean feat in the desert, and naturally, the plans propose that it will be the biggest urban park in the whole entire world. Everything here has to be the biggest, the shiniest, the best. That just seems to be the law. Due to open this year in 2024, the park would be seven times bigger than London's Hyde Park and five times the size of Central Park in New York. That place is massive, so this is an extreme park for sure. They're definitely going to win at all that green space stuff. Number 7. Amala, Saudi Arabia is everyone in the world going on their holidays to Saudi Arabia all of a sudden? I mean, why does the country need so many hotels? This is yet another project involving hotels and luxury tourism. Amala is a development that is located along the Red Sea coastline 
in the northwest of Saudi Arabia. It will naturally incorporate all the fanciest stuff that you can think of, and that includes sports and beaches and arts and culture, as well as all the luxury dining, entertainment, and hotel options you can shake a stick at. The goal is, when it's complete in 2027, it will have 25 hotels featuring more than 3,000 rooms, as well as a yacht club, spas, fancy retail, luxury residential spaces, and tons of recreational facilities. It will naturally be all of the most sustainable stuff that you've ever laid your eyes on, all necessary and all brilliant for the planet, and definitely not in any way whatsoever not eco-friendly. Not at all, not a sausage. Number 6. Daraya Nowhere is safe from the renewal and redevelopment plans in Saudi Arabia. Even the historic city of Daraya is in the crosshairs for a modern revamping and a bit of rebrand for the Saudi government. This ancient city is home of a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which they plan to exploit, <laughs> I mean sorry, showcase to its full extent by transforming the city into the foremost destination for culture in the entire world. Now again, with the world domination, this is beginning to sound obsessive. One phase out of maybe five? The city of Daraya is located about 20 minutes to the northwest of Riyadh and offers all kinds of culture and genuine luxury and history. The plan is to show off all the actual cultural stuff while offering inspiring heritage experiences as well as educational opportunities. When the rest of the country is one colossal eco-hotel, then this place is certainly looking slightly more appealing anyway. But of course, the plan is also to add a bunch of luxury accommodations like fine dining and high-end shopping. You know, just like everywhere else. Number 5. The Riyadh Metro The city of Riyadh had a population of 5.7 million in 2012. It's currently hovering at around 7 million, and predictions are to rise to 8 million by 2030. So, they decided that it was necessary to install a proper public transportation system. This is a scheme that actually makes sense. People need to get around, and a well-functioning metro is a great way to support that within a city. So, they began the project in April of 2014, and test runs started around 2018. It is due to open in 2024. The Riyadh Metro is part of a more wide project known as the Riyadh Public Transport Project, which aims to reduce congestion while improving air quality within the city. Number 4. Sindala Next up, we have yet another project in Saudi Arabia, and it does include even more hotels. I mean, who would have guessed? This is Sindala, another part of the NEOM project that aims to transform the country into a massive resort for the mega-wealthy. Or if it isn't that, well, I'm not really sure what it is. Sindala is an island resort with a bunch of tourist attractions, like a yacht club, naturally. Rich people do have all those boats to park. And a beach club, a spa, and of course a bunch of hotels, even fancy chain ones. The location of this place is what has made it so appealing to the yacht people. It is close to the Mediterranean Sea, and a lot of places can be reached in just a day's travel via the Suez Canal. Number 3. Riyadh Sports Boulevard This is a development within the city of Riyadh that aims to promote wellness and exercise by creating a cycling and general sports corridor throughout the city. This corridor covers 135 kilometers all around Riyadh and is promoted to the people as an alternative transportation space that prioritizes the human over the car while offering a safe and effective passage around the city. In terms of the eco-credentials of Saudi Arabia, this is at least one of its initiatives that is not kidding itself. The provision of a car-free corridor for the general public to enjoy, whether it be by foot or by bike, is a pretty effective way to reduce the reliance on vehicles, as well as giving people a space to use for exercise or otherwise. Number 2. King Salmon Energy Park Next up, we have another mega project. I know, you're shocked. This is the King Salmon Energy Park, a massive mega project that's being built between Dammam and Al Asa in the east of Saudi Arabia. Known as Spark, this project is due to be constructed in three phases and will ultimately be serviced by the highway and railway networks. This is the somewhat less modern sounding part of the Saudi future plans. I mean, after all, a large proportion of the GDP in this nation is still coming from its enormous oil industry. 
So the expansion and continuation of that very lucrative enterprise needs its own modern facilities, and this is just that. They say that they are committed to sustainable energy production at Spark, but the list of facilities sounds a teensy bit fossil fuel-y to me. What do you think, though? Spark incorporates a whole bunch of stuff from industrial things all the way through to exploration, production, refinement, and such like of oil into the petrochemical industry. There are also plans for this place to include all the stuff needed to support people and cities and everything else, like power and water and sewage treatment. It sounds a lot less sexy than all of those swankster hotels and wellness centers, but this is what Saudi wealth is really all about. Oil. Even if they're trying to distract everyone with massive shiny walls in the desert, or huge complexes with discos and wrestling matches, or even public parks and jogging paths, this place is set to increase the GDP by a cool $6 billion. So, you know. Number 1. Tarim Desert Highway Now we finally ventured out of Saudi Arabia for a brief visit to China. Such fun! This is the Tarim Desert Highway, a name which makes it sound kind of cool and appealing, like it would be in a road movie across America or something. But the place that this road cuts through is the Taklamakan Desert, which is also known as the Sea of Death. Sounds great! <laughs> Let's all go on vacation! Anyways, this desert highway was originally constructed for the purposes of transporting oil across China. This is actually the longest road in a shifting sand desert in the whole wide world. Take that, Saudi Arabia! And most of the road is actually subject to some extremely dangerous conditions, as the sands here often bury the highway up. So, all of that seems super fun and safe. These days, as well as all the transportation that it still does, the place now attracts lunatics who like to take madly hazardous journeys across desert landscapes. It takes about 10 to 12 hours to make that journey across the dangerous barren landscape without stopping, but there is a halfway point with a couple of restaurants and a gas station. Other than that, though, nobody lives here. It is a fairly strong indication of just how undesirable of a place that it actually is. Well, that's all from the dry and dusty landscapes of the desert for today. What did you think about all these extreme projects? Be sure to let me know when you're booking your next vacation to Saudi Arabia in the comments below. Check out the other cool things on the screen, and I'll see you next time.